Hey guys, it's Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films back again with Doctor Who Classic. Last time on Doctor Who Classic, we had the Ark. What all happened on that one? Well, that was uh, kind of unusual because it was a four-parter in two parts. Yes. They land on this transgalactic Ark, basically trying to save uh, some people from Earth and another uh, species called the Monoids. But... Uh, Dodo accidentally introduces a virus to them. They all get sick, and the doctor cures it. And then they take off, and when they land, they're right back on the same place, but they're 700 years later, and the monoids have taken over. And I, It was interesting, but kind of weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely an interesting concept of, you know, a, a good way of breaking up the, the usual four-parters we have. Um, and then, yeah, when we came back, there was also the planet with the non-corporeal <laughs> beings that... Uh, it could still build a house, and they were really nice. Um, and then we they worked out all the differences between the humans and the monoids. And then, uh, then they took off. Uh, the Doctor, Stephen, and Dodo. Uh, Stephen's wearing whatever that weird shirt he put on <laughs> at the end. I oh, looked like a sailor. Yeah, and also the Doctor is invisible. Yes, yeah, seemed to be uh, phasing in and out there at the end. Yeah. So, uh, and we speculated that this was. Uh, the possible first attempt at uh, recasting the Doctor, but we ultimately know that doesn't happen. Yeah. So uh, I'll be very curious as to how this is all going to work out. Now, 75% uh, of this episode is gone. It is. We are back in uh, Recon Town again, but uh, episode four is completely there. So I did see this morning that uh, the BBC is going to release a... Uh a fully animated version of one of Patrick Troughton's. It's like yeah. a six-parter. Um, the Invisible Ones or something like that. Hmm. I know that they've done a lot of... Because it's season three and season four that are that have the most missing episodes. So I think they've done a lot of the season four Patrick Troughton stuff. I'd, they, they're apparently not doing too many of the Hartnell episodes. Yeah. So, um, But yeah, I don't know. I Hopefully the... Hopefully that'll be released in time to watch that episode uh, on here. So That would be nice, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know, because some people have actually corrected me, I thought that there were missing episodes even into the third Doctor's era, but people have actually corrected me that, while, yes, that's true, they have found the black and white versions of those episodes. Huh. So we will have complete episodes, just some... And I think like those episodes have also been like updated, like they've been colorized later, so... That, there's at least that. Okay. So, so yeah, I think once we get past season four, we're kind of done with the missing episodes, um, for the most part, at least. So, yeah, um, I guess I guess that's pretty much that. You got anything else? No, we're getting close to the end of where I would have stopped watching. Uh, again, we left, uh, I think, around the first week of June of 1966 to come back to the United States, so we must be getting somewhere very close here. Yeah. And I do notice on our schedule it says that we have a new showrunner. Yeah. I do need to put that in quotes because people have corrected me that showrunner was not a concept back then, which makes sense. It was just the you know lead producer basically, yeah. but I mean, sort of the same thing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so I'm curious if that's going to affect, like, how is that going to affect the show? So. Uh, but yeah, if I mean, I guess that's pretty much it. So we should go ahead and get right into this episode of Doctor Who. Here we go. Hello there. If you're watching this, it's because that I've tried to upload this video about three or four times now, and each time it's been blocked for some weird, weird reason. Uh, but that's okay because there is still a way to watch the reaction to this episode. What you gotta do is head down in the description or to the pinned comment. Click on the link there. Generally, it'll be to Daily Motion. However, there is another link over to Google Drive if if you would prefer to use that, or the Daily Motion link doesn't work, or what have you. Um, but go click on that link. That will take you over to the reaction, and it's pretty much just the normal reaction, just like anything else. It's edited. It's nice and good. Uh, there's footage in the corner and stuff. You can watch it just like any other reaction. And when you're done with that, I do highly encourage you to pop back over to this YouTube video so that you can watch watch the discussion for this episode of whatever show I'm putting this clip in. So yeah, um, in the meantime, I will sit here and uh, let you go watch that. Also, for your viewing pleasure, is also my sleeping dog. 
Hope you enjoy that too. So yeah, that is pretty much that. Again, link in the description, and when you're done with that, pop right back over here for the discussion. Let's go ahead and get started. So he imitated the toy maker's voice. I'm guessing that's what he was doing. I guess. Again, that, that that wasn't very well set up. You know, if they yeah. if they had okay, one line somewhere earlier where the toy maker says, "Doctor, since you don't have a voice, and at one point he didn't have a hand," you know. I don't know, you can speak it and cause it to move. And that's where he would say, oh, wait a minute, I remember, you know, make the last move, make the 1,023rd move. So, I guess with the game, there's, like, you have to set up how many moves it takes, I guess. And for this one, it was 1,023. And you had to do it a specific way. And if the doctor messed up once, then obviously he would lose. So when the toy maker would say move to, you know, switch to this move, it would basically just jump him ahead to try to speed the game along yeah. because if the doctor wins first before Steven and Dodo, then they would all be trapped there. So the doctor figured out, oh, I just need to move ahead to the final move because we're back in the TARDIS and then that will put the last piece on, the game will be over, the world will be gone, and the TARDIS can get out of there. I guess. I don't know. I guess that's what they were going for, which I suppose is clever. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, and but again, I don't know that the average you know, 12-year-old, 13, 14-year-old school kid would have figured yeah, any it's, of this out. It's, it's a bit of a leap. It's Byzantine, to say the least. Yeah, so... Uh, and again, uh, we've been watching this for you know two and a half seasons now. That, in my opinion, is the worst script that we have seen. Uh, and again, we've been through some really, you know, ridiculous stuff. But that that's just, I mean, it's just poorly written. It, it aside from the fact that it was poorly realized, it's just the overall arc of the story just wasn't very good. Yeah, like, it's, it basically relies on Steven and Dodo to carry the episodes, and while they're good characters, I don't know if they could quite carry the episodes. Granted, the episodes that they were carrying just weren't good episodes. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to write something for them to carry, write something for their characters. You know, because yeah. it didn't. There was nothing specific to Stephen and Dodo that made their winning the the four games or three games, however many they played. I see, can't even remember how many games they played. That you know, something based on you know Stephen's. <laughs> brute strength or, you know, Dodo's, I, I don't know, personality, some kind of, you know, uh, but it just, it didn't, it didn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess there were four games in total. There was Blind Man's Bluff, there was the Dolls in the Chairs, uh, there was the Dance Floor, which was already preceded by Finding the Key. And then there was Hopscotch. And I thought, see, here's the thing. On the dance floor, because there were four of them and only three of the ballerinas, I thought a way out of that was that when all four of them were on there, the ballerinas couldn't figure out who to carry. So, like, Dodo could, could get into the TARDIS and then... I don't know, Stephen jumps on the back of the sergeant, and that way he would be carried across the floor and jumped off. Yeah. So just something a little bit more clever like that. I, I guess it was that because there were four of them, like, they were... Like, because every time someone got onto the dance floor, they switched partners. So it could be once there were four of them, like, maybe they started getting confused, and that allowed Stephen and Dodo enough time to break away, basically. Yeah. So... And again, we, again, we didn't have the the actual visuals there, but you know, ballet dancing. I mean, if you're going to dance, and it did say you'll you'll tap your feet forever, that would have been incredibly funny to actually have to do a tap dance because tap dancing is way more rigorous than ballet dancing. I mean, they would have been you know, if we don't do this, we're going to die because of exhaustion. So yeah, it just the the ballerina visuals didn't work for what they were doing. 
again, the, the kitchen episode was probably the best one, simply in the visuals and the two characters. But even so, it didn't go anywhere. You know, we're looking all around the kitchen. There's been no clue what was the servant boy doing there. Why was he there? You know, it's just the, the whole script was just like loose ends that never really tied up. Yeah. And, uh, thoroughly unsatisfactory. Yeah, and especially, too, because once you get to the final episode, first off, they give up on their idea of replacing Hartnell. But it's good because you get the Doctor back, and suddenly this becomes an episode again where we get the Doctor and his interactions with the villain. Yeah. And it's like, basically, in this episode, you took out the Doctor, and you kind of took the villain out of it for a while, and he could have been an interesting villain. Like, yeah. he kind of reminded me a bit of the Monk, maybe a bit more serious, uh, you yeah. know, not quite as goofy, but he kind of reminded me of that. And it's like, okay, this could be a good rival for the Doctor. But you don't have him, you don't have the Doctor, it's like, and now here's the Minions. None of which are fairly interesting. <laughs> yeah, and again, the the concept, the idea, uh, you know, the King of Hearts, the Queen of Hearts, uh, that could have, because of the idea of that, that could have been much better. Uh, again, never heard of the Sergeant and the Cook. I don't know where that comes from, but uh, there is probably some other fairy tale that you could come up with that you could have stuck in there. And like you said, instead of making the toy maker so dreadfully serious about all of this, have him more like the monk or you know somebody else who's got a sense of humor and yeah. who's, who's really excited about whether or not these people can win the game. Because from the very beginning he says, you cannot win this game and therefore you will be here forever. I'm so bored. Well, yeah, well, you're boring too. So it's just... Yeah, it's like this is a boring place. You've got boring servants. Like it's... It's no wonder you want to keep the doctor because he's the most interesting thing here. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, to kind of go into the notes, although I don't think we're going to be talking very long about this episode, unfortunately. Um, the toy maker. I mean, it would be interesting if he came back later in a better episode. Like, and again, you know, I was thinking, okay, you know, once the doctor comes back, this does become a little bit more interesting because you have. The Doctor working off of the Toy Maker. I did just sort of think, though, like, if you had the Doctor throughout the the complete episode, like, if we had a sequel, like, maybe with Troughton. Like, this could have been, like, this could actually be really fun if they do a sequel to this with Troughton, actually. You know, have him bouncing off the Toy Maker, whether it's, you know, uh, still the same actor. Or, I don't know, maybe they reveal he's a Time Lord and he regenerates. I don't know. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so that could be kind of interesting. But even just having the first Doctor throughout the whole thing would have been more interesting. Yeah. So, and especially too, because they already, the Doctor already knows the Toy Maker somehow. Yeah, seems to have met him before at some point. Yeah, before the events of the show, they they met up, and and it's something I don't get is they met up before, but the Doctor just didn't play the game whatsoever, and then he left, and it's like, so what changed here? Was it because he had companions, maybe? But even then, you would have, you would think that even before the show started, if he ran into the toy maker, he would have had Susan at that point. Yeah. So, I don't know. Just very, very confusing all the way around. Yeah, um, the invisibility and the taking away the voice that does make it a lot more obvious that that was supposed to be how they were going to replace Hardnell, which that that's a pretty bad way of doing it, yeah. honestly. Like. Um, so I'm glad we do end up going with the regeneration later. Although I am still curious if they were going to, if they had gone through with it, would they have cast someone to still technically be the first Doctor, just a different actor? Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, Blind Man's Bluff, that, uh, <laughs> by the way, um, going all the way back to Charles Dickens, in A Christmas Carol... In the novel, he actually spells it not bluff, but buff, B-U-F-F, blind man's buff. And I don't know if that was a misprint or if that's actually the way it's supposed to be and the Americans have simply mistakenly called it bluff because we don't understand why it would be called buff instead. So that's just a minor thing. Maybe, yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that, that happened. Again, it's like... It doesn't help that that was in recon, so we couldn't really yeah. see what was happening. But also, even if we could see it, that probably would have still been boring. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, here's this tiny, very tiny obstacle course that they have to get through. 
and it's like, okay, well, who are the, the bad guys in this scene? Just two clowns. And one of them is silent. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, again, if you're going to use clowns, give them a little bit better personalities. You know, her voice was incredibly annoying, uh, just so high-pitched that it was hard to understand what she was saying. And then the guy, Joey, is, you know, honking a horn. If you're going to go with that horn, I mean, use a, a, a Harpo Marx type of character. Make him a lot more fun. But this guy, no, he's the sad clown. And <laughs> I just it, it literally makes no sense from scene to scene why why anybody thought this would be a, a good arc story. You know, sad clowns seem like a contradiction. Like, I, like, are you not being paid to make people happy? Why are you the sad one? Like, you're specifically paid for this. But yeah, so... So they were pretty boring. You know what doesn't help? The fact that this entire episode shows how frustrated Steven's getting. So in turn, you're getting as frustrated as Steven is. Yes, yes. So it's like, you're not... You're not really helping your case here, you know? <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, we had the dolls and the chairs. It, it, I guess it also doesn't help that each game has to last a full episode. So it's like, okay, now we're going to spend 24 minutes with putting dolls into various chairs, you know? And it's like, yeah. and then she takes a chance because she, she doesn't know yeah. that it's not an instantaneous death. So, she kind of lucked out, even though it was the wrong chair, she lucked out that she was able to yeah, get out. but that was a very risky, very you know, stupid move on her part. Yeah. Because she could have been electrocuted or you know, squashed or anything like that. So that's, again, it. I realize we're you know talking about science fiction here, but that strains the credibility of the story. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, that one happened... Uh, there was the search for the key, which again also just sort of happened. I don't know what fairy tale that is. Um, the only thing that even vaguely came to my mind uh, is the there's a story called the Puppet Prince, where uh, uh, a young soldier uh, falls in love with a girl, mm. and uh, don't mind me. It's it's kind of like the uh, the story of Lady Hawk, the evil wizard turns him into uh, a, a giant toy soldier where uh, basically at a, I can't remember if at night time he turns into the soldier and at daytime he comes back to life and of course he's trying to get back to the wizard's castle in order to save the girl uh, yeah. I did a variation of that when I was in college but uh, again I had never heard of the, the story of the puppet prince before that okay this doesn't help so when I look up Sergeant Rugg and Mrs. Wiggs it takes us to the wiki page for this episode. <laughs> so they completely made that up. Yeah. All right. I'll just... Okay. You could have gone with any fairy tale. You made one up. Yeah. And not even a fairy tale. It's just some sergeant and some some cook in this weird sitcom. And I got to tell you, uh, when I saw the cook there uh, at first, the first actual thing that flashed into my mind was Sweeney Todd. Hmm. You know, that... That, now that, of course, you're, you're doing all of this fun stuff with, you know, uh, Mrs. Lovett and, and Sweeney Todd and everything, only to find out later that, you know, Sweeney Todd is a serial killer and Mrs. Lovett is actually baking all the dead people into her pies. I thought, now that would be really creepy, but no, we can't do that because, again, if your target audience is teenagers, we're not going to watch them, you know, guys getting their throats slashed and she's chopping them up and making pies out of them. That said... I do remember when I was in high school, uh, the high school put on Sweeney Todd. Yeah. And I was like, this seems like an odd thing for us to be putting on at the high school, yeah. but I've watched it anyway. So. <laughs> it also reminds me of that, uh, that wonderfully wacky little uh, animated film, uh, Chicken Run. Yeah. And my favorite line from that is when the, the, the female chicken keeps saying, but I don't want to be a pie. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they're making a sequel to that, actually. Yes, but not with Mel Gibson. Right. Uh, <laughs> Talk about being off in the weeds. Yeah. We're not talking about Sweeney Todd and Chicken Run. I, I mean... Okay, I mean... The, what else can we talk about? It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was a whole sort of sitcom with the Sergeant Rug and Miss Wig. I'm really struggling to remember their names. <laughs> Carol Burnett Show, Mrs. Wiggins. Mr. Tudball. 
I keep wanting to say Sergeant Pepper, and I'm like, that's clearly wrong. No, but so. it would have been roughly... No, because uh, I was going to say Sergeant Pepper was... I was going to say 66, but I think Sergeant Pepper was 67. They were probably mm. recording it in 66. Well, yeah. But, yeah. So unless Doctor Who got the inside scoop on it, <laughs> that would have been hilarious. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, the dance floor... Uh, uh, that also happened like at, at least with that episode like it was split up between the kitchen and the dance floor so and who has a triangular dance floor i mean even in the disco era there were no triangular <laughs> dance floors yeah so um it, it it would have been funny if they were like doing the twist and stuff cuz that was also like when we watched an adventure in space and time and it like cut to a party and then it's just people and they're just you know talking normally but they're just doing this the entire time. It's like, wow, that looks stupid. <laughs> that looks so dumb. But back in the 60s, that's what we did, you know? Yeah. When you're at a party, you're having fun, you're, you know, doing I'm the sh- twist. And-, and I'm sure dancing has not gotten better at all. Like, I'm sure there are dance moves now that are just as cringy, but yeah. still. <laughs> um, uh, we had the hopscotch, uh, which, again, hopscotch is... You know, one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten. Uh, yeah, it's it hopscotch in name only, really. Like, uh, it was more like I don't know, shoots and ladders, or any, you know, any kind of game where you know you you land on the same square, you bump somebody off. That was not a hopscotch at all, really. Yeah, I like that they spent the money to make this giant column that rotates to show the number, probably just because they didn't want to. They couldn't, like, do multiple takes if they roll, and they didn't get the number in the script. Yeah. So, um, it's like, it, I don't know, it just seems kind of odd. Um, and then, I mean, Cyril, I mean, he was slightly interesting. Like, he was the most interesting of the, like, henchmen that yeah. we had. But it's yeah. like, he didn't do much. And, like, I and I will say, because, you know, we talked about how the entire episode, you're with Steven and all of his frustrations. So, towards the end... When Cyril fakes his foot bleeding and Dodo is yelling, it's like, no, we have to help him. She goes back and then it's the trick. It's like, come on. Now, you've uh, got to be kidding. Again, now I don't know if this was just the camera work, but, you know, he did bend down, that which is obviously where he put the, you know, slippery powder on there. Yeah. And he says, you know, can't you wait for a guy to tie his shoe? But again, the camera work should have shown him putting something down there so that we would have known because when he finally slipped off and died and then Peter came over and went, oh, wait a minute, there's some slippery powder. It's like, oh, yeah, a couple of minutes ago he did bend down and do something, but we didn't see that before. So it was just, yeah. again, that's that's poor direction or cinematography, not setting that up so that we, the audience, can see it even though Stephen and Dodo don't see it. Yeah. Um, I also like just the horribly mangled body <laughs> that they cut over to. It's like... Ooh, that's a uh, it's a little dark there. He so. did look somewhat like a baked potato. Yeah. So, but that was I mean I was I kind of liked it. It was honestly kind of funny. So, um, <sighs> let's see, uh, victory if the doctor that that was kind of interesting that if the doctor made the last move, the world would be destroyed and then they would be destroyed along with it. Um, so that was kind of clever and you know it's like oh even though the toy maker will live on. They won't unless they can, you know, dematerialize the TARDIS at the exact moment. So, that was interesting. And again, I can kind of see where they were going with the whole, you know, imitate the imitate the toy maker to go to the final move while the Doctor is still in the TARDIS so that they could dematerialize. It just... It's... You really gotta, like, stop and think and stretch to get to what they were going for. Uh, and again... One sentence in one of the earlier episodes where, you know, he uh, dematerializes the Doctor and he's he's incorporeal, he can't move. If he would have just said, well, Doctor, even though you don't have a hand, I will allow you to use your voice to make the next move. So that somewhere along the line they said the Doctor can use his voice yeah. to move a piece. So that in the end, when Stephen says we can't talk our way out of this, and he goes, that's it. And he says, move the last piece, dematerialize, and then it makes perfect sense. Yeah, or just saying like, oh, so... You just have to speak, and then the moves will happen. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting. Whereas I am relegated to, although then how would he be able to do that at the end? But yeah, so. Um, and yeah, we could, I guess we could see the toy maker again. be interesting if they brought him back, like, in the modern series. Yeah. Um, 
And also, I was kind of thinking this, you know, the whole time, you know, we we sort of recognized him, you know, as Alfred from the Batman movies. I did think he sort of looked like Timothy Dalton. Like, he, he kind of looked a bit of a younger Timothy Dalton, yeah. but I, I, I sort of saw it. Grant, Timothy Dalton has actually been on Doctor Who before, so it you can't use him for the toy maker as well. But Now, strangely enough, I mean, you want to talk about coincidences, I think in 1966 they were filming Lion in Winter, and I think Timothy Dalton, no, I was going to say Timothy Dalton was in that, but now I, I'm, I'm not sure. I know that uh, Anthony Hopkins was in it, but I can't remember if Timothy Dalton was or not. Hmm. He might have played Philip. I don't know. I'd have to look that up again. Um, I guess that's it. Whew. That's kind of all we got. Uh, we are played out. What we got next week? Gunfighters. Gunfighters. It's, That'll be oh, complete serial. Yay! Yep. Because again, we seem to be alternating for some reason. Uh, next next week is good, then the next week is not good, then the next week is good, and then the next week is not good, and then the next week is mostly good. So. Partly missing part four animated. Yes. So. Planet. All right. Um, so, yeah. Next time, hopefully a historical. Um, and hopefully it's better than the last historical we had. Yeah. This is, this is kind of an odd season we've been going through. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. These episodes, like... I, I, they're good for the most part, but overall, it's like this is a fairly odd like time in the writers' room that we've got. Yeah, I, I I'm really missing uh, Verity Lambert's guidance because whereas it was very focused those first two seasons, it's really now starting to veer off into you know areas where you're just going, yeah, why? Why would they do this? Yeah, and it kind of makes me wonder. It's like how much of this is. Like, maybe they're writing around Hartnell. Like, well, because obviously this episode is heavily, you know, burdened by whoever's decision it was to try to write Hartnell off the show. And then whoever came in told him no. And then that means you just have to bring him back in the fourth episode. So, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's all we got for <laughs> this one. We will see you guys next time. Relax and Dad from 7th Hour Films. And I already said see you guys next time. So, All right. Nah. Bye. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of our Doctor Who classic reactions, you can click on the playlist. You can subscribe if you haven't done that already. And be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media. Links below in the description. See you guys later.